Welcome fellow cosplayers to my YouTube channel. My name is Lizzie. I have been professionally making anime cosplay wigs for about three years now. Today, let's make Malone from Ocarina of Time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and post a comment below of things that you thought were interesting. And press that bell button to see when I'm going to upload next. The first thing you need to do for Malone is you need to section off her hair. We're going to go from the bottom to the top, just like you should for every wig. We're going to do the side locks, and then we're going to do the bangs. In order to get the extra hair for the bangs, we're going to be harvesting it from the back of the wig, so you don't have to buy two wigs. You can if you want, but it's not necessary. When you're creating any type of cosplay wig, the first thing that I suggest you do is buy a mannequin head that is to your head shape. On top of that, you should always measure between your eyebrows to where your hairline is and mark it on your mannequin so when you place the wig on the mannequin, it's going to align to where your hair is going to be. Place the wig on the mannequin and align the hairline. Go to the side of the wig and remove that extra bulk around the scalp. This is a 23 inch wig and I need it to be about 21 and a half for my customer. So this is a great way to remove some extra bulk that's in the wig so it fits your head much better. I used a whip stitch type of technique to sew the pieces together and I hand tied the end of the stitch to keep its elasticity. I found the middle part of the hair and lined it with the tip of the nose straight up and I used my rat tail comb to find it. I went about two inches in to find where the bangs would start their bulk and parting. Go to the side of the bangs and what you're going to do is you're actually going to crimp it first. The crimping creates really nice texture and waves in the hair so that when you steam it, it will work really well for you to create shapes. If you don't crimp it, there's a good chance that the hair isn't going to do what you want it to. I went to the side of the wig and I harvested a whole bunch of wefts that I could use for rebuilding up her bangs on the side. I created a stronger hairline in the front by using some felt. I just uh, guesstimated where I wanted it to be and I hot glued it right in there. This is going to create a really nice kind of shell so that when the wig is taken on and off, the glue of the bangs won't crack. I took those wefts that I had harvested and re-glued them to the side of the wig because the original wig wasn't long enough on the sides for me to create a really nice type of bang. I didn't really like how the top of the bang was looking on the wig so I had removed a bit of it about two inches in still and I'm building up the top of the wig again to create a really nice deep parting in the middle. I used hot glue and re-glued on all of the hair. Be careful, please don't burn your fingers. It's not fun. I've done it many times. Don't glue on the black, black piece though. Only glue on the wig cap. I went to the side and I was estimating where her locks were gonna be and I put my, my fabric ruler down and tried to align it to about like seven inches do more than too little when you're cutting hair you can always take off more but you can't put the hair back and it's not fun when you screw up i used a point cutting technique to remove some of the bulk and i went in with a a teasing comb and created more bulk in the center i hit it with some got to be glued hairspray and got some heat on it to warm up the follicles and make it more solid Go ahead and pick out the tees, and this is going to allow you to have this nice cotton type of texture to it. It's nice and fluffy, and it really works well with steam. Brush out the hair as you go to keep your wig really nice and organized. Do the same thing to the opposite side. I used a slithering technique to remove some of the bulk from the sides of the points so it would taper really nicely for me and I could steam it really nice to the mannequin's face which is going to look great on the customer because those types of side locks are very slimming to the face and I wanted to make sure that it was going to look really nice. I used some hairspray to clean up the frizzes around the edges of the hair and she turned out pretty great. I liked how it looked so I hit her with some 
glue that it's Eileen's glue. It's 50% uh, water, 50% Eileen's glue, and I smooshed it into the corners of the wig points. This is gonna give it more longevity and it's gonna last way longer. I went and guesstimated how long I wanted the bangs to be. I did probably two or three inches longer than I wanted because if I have less hair to work with, I can't add it back in, but if I have too much hair, I can easily subtract it. So all I'm doing here is I'm teasing only the roots of the wig. I don't want to do the outside because I want the tips to be really nice and organized. I picked out all of the fluff that I had created because I wanted the outside to look nice and, well, like flock of seagulls haircut again, just like Link. I went in with some steam and I steamed up the hair to create those really nice flowy bangs that would work really well for her hairstyle. It's not going to look perfect at this point, but it's going to be fine. Trust the process. I went in and used some teasing to re-strengthen that front hairline. You want that front hairline to be as strong as possible since it's going to be holding all of that glue and you don't want your bangs cracking while you're cosplaying. So take extra time to make sure it's as hard as a rock. I decided to add some more wefts to the center to fill up that void that was there. This is going to create a really nice gluing area to put down more wefts and create that really nice pinched in center hair piece to the bang. Using steam is going to be your best friend. So I used steam and I molded the bang. I went in with some glue right after molding it to the size that I wanted. This is UHU glue that I use. You can find all the products that I use in my description below. You want to make sure that that wall of hair is as hard as possible to hold all of the extra wefts that you're going to be putting down. Do it to both sides and continue on. It's going to look weird, but you got to trust the process. Next, hit it with some hot glue, fill in all of those empty little holes that you see. We don't want any type of little holes because it can make the hair kind of like divot in instead of having that nice uniform kind of like wave effect. I created some wefts. I made sure to make them into little points at the top. And same thing for the center parting too. So I'm making the front part and I'm making the middle part. I kind of wanted to do all the wefts at the same time since everything would be ready for me and I could continue my process and keep everything organized. This is gonna be a little tricky. So you have to kind of smush in all of that glued area. I re-glued it after it dried to give it more adhesion and push it down with a rat tail comb. I had to play with this a little bit. It never goes 100% nice the first time. You kind of have to play around, see what works for you, pinch it where you need to and continue on from there. I kind of like bent the little front hair pieces so it can mold nicer to the shape of her bangs. I added extra glue for extra reinforcement and I added it also to the bang along with the black part now. We're going to be gluing it to the black so that it will keep the wig looking nice and uniform. Where before when I was putting down the wefts I only put it on the wig cap but not the black piece because the black piece is for your front hairline. I put, I think, about like two wefts of hair in, just about. You can do tinier sections if you want, if you're a little intimidated. I went to the side part, since everything was ready and nice, and I used a slithering technique to get rid of some of that bulk on the hair. If you have too much bulk, it doesn't really work well with the steam, so the less you have on the tips, the better. I used my rat tail comb to kind of mold it just like you would with like putty or clay. It works just the same. I went back in and I removed more bulk, brushed it out because I want everything nice and neat, and hit it with some more steam to make those nice points. You want to hold the hair when it's hot. I know, dangerous for your fingers, but when it cools, it's going to hold that shape just like I'm showing right here. Now the back part was kind of too long so I went back in there and I took more bulk out and I changed up its shape a little bit to be more flattering for my customer's face. Just go ahead and 
clean up those little itty bitty wisps, just use the point of your rat tail comb with some steam and it's gonna clean up pretty nicely for you. It won't be perfect right away, but when you hit, hit it with hairspray in the end, it's gonna clean it up really nice and you're gonna be pretty happy with the result. I went in because I wasn't very happy with how the front of her bang was kind of drooping, so I went back in with some steam and re-steamed it. And this is what I got. Now you have to do the same thing on both sides. This is when the little tab of a uh, ruler will help you a lot. I used it quite a bit to make sure that things were equal. Now I moved to the back of the wig. This is where we're going to make those little cute little hair wispies that are just about shoulder height. I went in and guesstimated how much I would use for the hair. If I were to redo this, I would probably put it a little farther back away from the ear line because it was a little awkward when I was trying to mold it. Though it looks good right now, it was strange to kind of maneuver and I didn't quite like that. So I would probably move it back to the next point. Hit it with some hairspray and what you're going to do now is just kind of clean up those little wispies that are laying around. Saturate it with hairspray, use your fingertips and massage the hairspray into the hair. It's going to keep everything nice and fluffy, but yet clean and pristine. Go ahead and use some glue, clean up those edges, make them nice and sharp. Once again, you can hit it with more hairspray if you'd like. You can also create more depth to your wigs by using steam and your rat tail comb. The heat will come from the rat tail comb since it's getting heat heated up by the steam and uh, it'll turn out really nice. I will be making more videos on tutorials of wigs. The wigs take a little longer to make, bear with me. It's a lot to video, edit, clean up, post to Instagram, post to TikTok, and then get my YouTube videos out. I'm trying my best to do once a week, though that might not always be true. Please bear with me. I have a lot of fun projects in the future. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends who are also interested in wig making but are too intimidated. And I hope to see you again. Bye.